So, um, twin boys, they're now 19. Um, it just, it, I'm so frustrated because both your stories, I'm probably going to get upset, just yeah. so you're aware. But your stories hit home so much because I just think your kids are a lot younger than mine and this shit is still, mm-hmm. like, with different circumstances, different um, disabilities and that, but it's still, like, where are the child's parent? We know that there's something not normal. Mm-hmm. Whatever normal is, the, our child isn't hitting those milestones. Welcome to this episode of Winging It, and I am with three ladies that are not winging it. They are making it happen, and I'm sure they've got some plan, some organisation to their lives, because they are raising children with disabilities. I tried to find the right word. I didn't know whether I should say uh, challenging abilities, disabilities, uh, not so able abilities, but these ladies are really happy with the title disabilities. So I'm I, I'm not here to offend anyone. And so please don't troll me in the comments if I haven't got it right. This is a learning experience for me because I do not live in their shoes. And so I'm really fortunate to have three wonderful women that are living in the shoes of raising children with disabilities. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm Becky. I've got uh, three kids. My uh, disability children are uh, twin boys with uh, ADHD and severe conduct disorder. And I have ADHD too. So yeah, it's a whole house of um, great stuff. Yeah, stuff. Uh, Hi, my name is Sharifa. I have two children. Um, My son being the youngest, he is six and he has been diagnosed with ASD, um, autism basically, and that is behavioral and he is nonverbal. Hi, I'm Jade. I have two daughters, one of which is 15 years old and she has cerebral palsy, is profoundly deaf and has special needs. The array of disabilities doesn't just stop here. We acknowledge that there are many women, men raising children with a varied amount of abilities or disabilities. But I really want you to sit and talk and see what life is like for you because I remember when I was um, pregnant with my daughter, I only have one daughter, and they said to me that it is likely that she will have spina bifida. And I was 18 weeks pregnant. And my partner and I at the time were like, whoa, okay. It's a bit overwhelming. Mm. Uh, What does this look like? I had to read about it. I'd never met anyone with spina bifida. Mm -hmm. He made the choice at the time to say, I don't want a child with disabilities. And so if you choose to have this baby, then I've got to tell you, this life is not for me. I chose to continue my pregnancy and my daughter is here and she doesn't have spina bifida. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. But I lived my pregnancy going for checks every two weeks with the worry mm-hmm. that that would be my life. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. when did you ladies find out that your child had a disability? I'm, gonna, I'm not going to, I'm going to leave you last because yours is the most complex. <laughs> Jade. So, me, throughout my pregnancy with my daughter, everything was fine. I got to five months pregnant, I started having bleeds, spots, yeah. spotting. Um, but we did abnormality tests, everything was fine. She arrived at 27 weeks. Oh. Um, she weighed 90 grams. I had a placental abruption, which is usually caused by a fall. But I was working two jobs. I oh. think I just put a lot of stress, stress onto myself. Um and they didn't actually diagnose her cerebral palsy until she was a year and four months. Wow. She was in hospital for eight months after I had her. She was on a ventilator for six. Um, so, you know, she came out and she, she wasn't meant to be here. She didn't even have nipples. You could see her veins, everything. She was like a happy milkway. You could literally hold her and you pump your hands. Um, but I knew something was wrong when she came home at eight mm. months. Mainly the first time was her hand was fisted and it was really hard to, mm. it was so tight. And they said she's just physically delayed because she was in the cot for so long. Okay. But it's almost like I could see she was trying to sit up but couldn't. Um, and I pressed on with the paediatrician to give her an MRI scan, which she didn't do. Mm-hmm. And told me it was a year and three months and, and she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. So help me understand, is cerebral palsy genetic? or So some children can be born with cerebral palsy. You can tell when you have scans in your pregnancy, sometimes they can tell if your child's going to have cerebral palsy. The reason why Mia came that way is because when I had the placenta eruption, her brain was starved of oxygen. Obviously, the placenta mm. 
So the oxygen, they took her out with clamps. Um, so she had a big bruise on one side of her skull, which is where the nerve damage is. So cerebral palsy is a, a form of brain damage, right. nerve damage to the brain. Um, and that's how it came back. She wasn't meant to be this way. She was born at term. We wouldn't have had this situation. But there are other children um, during pregnancies where you can tell they're going to have cerebral palsy. They have had malic checks, you can see. So you started by saying that you were working two jobs. And for me, as someone that's quite, I'm an overthinker, do you feel any sense of blame? I will never forgive myself for that. Um, do you see what I mean? I, and I hate that. The thing is, I was 18 when I had Mia, and I thought I knew the world. You know, you, I felt pregnant. My mum didn't want to talk to me. My mum and my dad, I'm really close to them, but everyone was so disappointed. I mean, I did performing arts. I was used to doing West End Theatre, and I worked in a law firm, and I had so much. Like, yeah, my yeah, mum yeah. had planned for me. So with me, I just, I, I had no idea what it would be like, but I was sure, because I only found out when I was four months with her. You know, my dad had had a, a stomach bug. My mum had it and it lasted a week with them. Mine lasted for three weeks. So I went to the hospital and it, the doctor was so smart. He, he asked my mum to come out and get some papers he'd left in the other room. And that's when he told me, you know, you're pregnant. By that point, obviously, if I know I was four months, literally, I had my scan a week later. I knew I couldn't get rid of, get rid. I couldn't have a termination. Um, but because my family was so upset with me and it was sort of like, you know, what are you going to do? You're probably going to have to rely on everybody else. That was why I said, no, no, no. I will do for me. Yes. You know, God's great because at 27 weeks, I already had a cart, I had a buggy, I had everything was set. But um, yeah, I, I, I will never forgive myself for that. And with the doctors, they say, you know, it can happen for any reason. But it's just something, you know, like you got one job during your pregnancy and that's just a whole baby till it's time. And it's not so easy. I'm no. Not, I, I can't, you know, I've, I've had t- two miscarriages prior to Ashley and I all, I was working in child protection and I was working a really stressful job and I've always blamed myself for the loss of those children because I feel that, you know, why, I, I wasn't, I was working 50 hours a week and I was thinking, I'm not, I wasn't nurturing the, the life that was growing in me. And so I get that. I get the the blame. What, how do you how did you come to know that your son had autism? So uh, my sorry, my pregnancy was uh, I have bad pregnancies. Period. Um, like the morning sickness was not morning; it was all day. Mm. Um, and you know, I lose weight, I gain it in the last two months. But all of that aside, I had good pregnancies. My children were healthy. Mm. Ronan was uh you know he was hitting those um those marks you know as he was growing he was walk- master yeah that's right yeah. master he was walking at nine months he was strong yeah um he was saying mommy he was saying daddy he was saying bye bye then at about 14 months that just slowly stopped mm-hmm. um yes yeah, sorry so no went by went when daddy went, we were concerned. When you went and went, it, he just wasn't responding to... No, no, I mean, he was saying these words and then he just stopped saying them. Saying anything. Well, he still says mum to this day, mum. Uh, but that's it. Everything else went and then this started happening. So they call it stimming. Okay. And uh, because of his age, because of how young he was, I was just sort of... I was just sort of laughing it off saying... Mm. I was actually saying to him you know stop casting spells just like sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm thinking it's just a kid just just having fun basically yeah um but then because the words were gone and they stayed gone and then that the hands and then he started walking on tiptoe yeah so I then said okay GP time yeah but I really had to make noise he so at GP time how old is he he was 15 months okay I started just, like just making random appointments every six months uh, think something's wrong here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's fine. Children develop at their own pace. Yeah, that's fine. He's a boy. They take longer than girls. And then he was only diagnosed last year, May, during the lockdown. And he's six? Yeah. He was five at the time. But he was non... How, but, sorry. So mm. he's been non-verbal mm. from 15 months to six or five. 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 Mm. And that's three years. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. How do you? I don't understand. Oh, autism I, oh. is not something that's new. 
I got apologies left and right because um, especially where, because he wasn't at nursery, the first couple of times I went to the GP, it was just a case of, because he was so young, you know, kids, think mm. maybe he needs more time to develop. By the time he was about three and I had brought him, the GP sort of refused to take it any further because I wasn't putting him into nursery. Um, obviously loads of people have different opinions about that I don't care um, my <laughs> son can't tell me who's hurt him who's done yes, what to him blah 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 yeah. so I thought yeah no, no. Um, and I have no problem being a mother staying at home with my child no problem whatsoever so uh, because of that sorry my word wasn't good enough for the GP that's mm. what I got from that so were you being blamed needed... for not taking him to nursery to stimulate his no 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 none of oh, that okay. he was just he needed a uh, he needed a professional's uh, say so he needed someone from uh, the I've nursery or a school I've thank you that. so he needed to hear that so I said okay so never mind the woman who's with him all day every day mm-hmm. night and day mm-hmm. you need a professional and he said yes a referral so that was what took so long so it wasn't until he started at primary school which gave me serious palpitations yeah. <laughs> because it's mainstream he couldn't I couldn't get him despite the fact that I could see what I could see I knew what I knew couldn't get him into special needs school yeah, but didn't he have like didn't he have yeah. like the three year check you know, yeah, was, he had his. He and so when they went for the three year check, and he's on tiptoes. But that's that's what I'm talking about. They were just like, well, we need to speak. We need um, a referral from. It's really. It's it was really uh, stupid. <laughs> but also, like, I feel your frustration. Oh yeah, yeah. And how are you parenting a child that doesn't have a diagnosis and knowing what to do right or wrong for him? Because I'm guessing that you're just reading you're googling you're trying a thing yeah i love books so i read and um i spoke to people i was online um but here's the thing with uh with me um like i said i do love children i love Mm. babies so for me my son uh where he is mentally he's around about he's around about two so it's just like having a two-year-old yeah. for an extra four years which i don't mind oh. he's still so cute and cuddly Love he's that. still yeah so i don't I, it doesn't bother me yeah like that what Rex. bothers me is other people sorry it's fine mm. it's good <laughs> when did you find out so you've got twins so um twin boys they're now 19 um God. It just, it, i'm so frustrated because both your stories i'm probably going to get upset just yeah. so you're aware your stories hit home so much because I just think your kids are a lot younger than mine and this shit is still mm-hmm. like with different circumstances, different um, disabilities and that, but it's still like, where are the child's parent? We know that there's something not normal. Mm-hmm. Whatever normal is, the, our child isn't hitting those milestones or it's just going way above those. So yeah. regardless if you're, cleverer or not forgive the terms mm. but it's just there's something wrong and we know that mm. and that the, the fact that health professionals don't take you seriously is just so mm-hmm. it makes me so angry sorry um for me now okay so um i um i had preeclampsia when i was uh pregnant with my preeclampsia is high blood pressure high blood pressure um I, I can't remember the, all of it now, but it's high blood pressure, so you gain a lot of weight, which is like excess water, there's too much yeast in your body. Right. All of that obviously affects child development. It can bring on um, early labour and so forth. Um, again, like you, I was working all the hours I could get with whatever I was doing, really. Um, I love my job and I love working. And and I guess when you say how we don't take care of our bodies carrying our child... I think it's because we just take that for granted okay. without yeah. realising. For sure. Um, it's just, if I could go back and do things differently, I most definitely would. But at the same time, would I give up what I've got now for the sake of doing something different? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been 19 years of pure freaking stress. Yeah. But I actually wouldn't change it because that's made us who we are right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I had preeclampsia. I had them at 32 weeks by emergency cesarean. Um, they were 5'5 five, five and 4'11, which is mad big for a child at 32 weeks. <laughs> but if I went 40 weeks, they already thought I was carrying like three or four. <laughs> I was disgustingly massive <laughs> because of excess water and swelling mm-hmm. and the remnants of uh, preeclampsia in me. So um, we were in hospital for a few weeks till we got them home. And as I mentioned earlier, I knew from real early there was something wrong with, we're going to just go with twin one, twin two, yeah? <laughs> with twin two. Um, 
hyperactive at such an age is not normal. But this is your normal. this is your fi- first child. How do you know what hyperactivity looks like? Because I I did ask someone if my daughter has ADHD. I think I asked you. I think you did. I did. And I said, does she have it? Because she's wild. Like for me, she, this is my first child. Yeah. I don't know what that looks like. And what I read, it looks like that. And Becky's like, nah, that's not it. And I'm like, no, but it must be. No, we've, I've, but like I said to you, Rashley, she's just inquisitive and she's just energy driven. Mm. She just likes to have that. But then if, again, when I compare you and the, uh, the father, you're both like this, <laughs> yeah. do you know what I mean? So yeah. she just has that from you both, I feel. Bear in mind, you, I'm not, I don't have high, a what does, what, does, what, does, what does twin two's hyperactivity look like? Twin two, okay, put it this way. Uh, um, uh, probably eight months, nine months old. Like you said, walking at nine months is quite mm, early-ish. Mm. Um, but climbing out your cot at nine months old, Ooh, fully yeah. able to crawl yeah. up and down, mm. like... Are you dumb? But isn't that, <laughs> pulling himself up. But isn't that gifted? Isn't that... Is it? Like, I would see that as, you know, you've got dexterity, you've got strength, you're a... No? No. No. Pulling yourself Mad. up, crawling, walking at probably around ridiculously early. Like, even if I say eight months, that's still early in comparison to where they mm. should be. You're not supposed to be walking until you're one. No. You're crawling like you've got this uh, at like eight months old. It's and not, so ADHD is, what is it? So ADHD is um, hyperactive attention deficit disorder. Um, they have ADD, which is attentive deficit disorder. Uh, attention, sorry, where you, so the two, now apparently they don't do ADD. Everybody is just under that bracket of ADHD. Right. So hyperactivity, attention disorder. But like I explained to so many people, just because your hyperactivity doesn't mean that you're like Tigger, you're not jumping, jumping, jumping. I'm not doing that, but my brain is literally a hundred miles an hour all the time. All the time. Isn't that an overthinker? Because I feel like I'm my brain is always going. I'm always thinking of, okay, what have I got to do next? What have no, I got to do? It's not it's it's, it's almost like for me personally and how and how I've raised mine is there there you need a list for every single thing you're doing. I have a list for my list to make sure that I don't forget the list to do what I'm doing. And any parent with a disability child will probably have those lists because if you don't manage to get what you need done in that two-hour bracket that you've probably got mm-hmm. to wipe your ass and brush your teeth, mm-hmm. then you're never going to get that done. With an adhd my 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 because everybody's different my side and my twin one side is that if I've got my list and I'm just able to tick off one of those things in that entire day I'm good because the procrastination that comes along with the overthinking is ridiculous we work better under pressure because now I know I've got to get that done and I've only got a day I am on top form you know what I was so your days are busy <laughs> Jane what's your days like what do they look like at the moment ah <laughs> uh... It all depends on Mia's mood, I guess. My mm. my eldest daughter, I mean, it depends. If she's at school, it's completely different. Um, when she's at home, we've got behavioural issues that are happening at the moment. Mia is non-verbal. Um, she signs, but she's very, yeah, she's really hormonal right now. She's a typical 15-year-old. Mm. Um, but she just, it can take anything to kind of trigger anything her upset and she has a way she's got it just happened over the last two years she repeats everything so she'll ask me am I going to school tomorrow I'll say yeah then she can ask me 72 times in about two minutes and that's no word of a lie um and you can just see her getting more and more frustrated I'm answering I'm saying yes but it's 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 like this in anxiety she has and she needs mm-hmm. you to just keep on reassuring and then you have Jayla my other little M, and she's eight going on 18 um very intelligent but because of Mia's needs Jayla's got her emotional needs too she she seeks attention quite a lot mm-hmm. um and she gets it for good reasons but when Mia's in a moment Jayla then chooses that time to have a moment so at the moment we're going for a stage of Mia waking up hence my red eyes Mia waking up at 4 30 it's happened for like this is like the third week now so we go through stages so it could be four it can be three and she'll stay up until nine and do what? yeah when she gets up at four, she'll ask me about school. She'll get herself in the bathroom. She'll undress herself. Time, it's time to shower. Like, we need to get ready for school. At four. She loves school. Yeah, but four. And I'm like, as she, you know, she can't tell the time, but she looks outside and sees if it's, like, daylight, then it must be time to go. So I'll tell her no. And then we'll have shouting going on for a few hours. Um, and she'll stay frustrated in that time. Jayla will wake up, 
this is my morning this morning mm-hmm. Jayla will wake up because she's been woke up early her and Mia tend to clash um, Mia's okay right now she thought she was going to school today but she's gone to the carers and uh, he's he's my godfather he's a great guy but she's used to going to his to go to school so I kind of tricked her into thinking that was a possibility <laughs> yes. in order to leave out but it's just to keep that con- constant it that, can that, be a that lot routine it has c- to be the same all the time even yeah. if if their like, routine's thrown the lockdown, minimal of change lockdown just, was the worst yeah in lockdown for Mia she couldn't understand why she wasn't going to school Mad. And I can explain to her, school's everything to her. Like, she loves socialising. And that's her place, I guess, where she, she can just be herself with others. Other than is she not in her life. last year of school, though? No, she's in year nine now. She, yeah, she should be heading into... Yeah, her school goes up to sixth form. Oh, okay. But lockdown, I could tell her, you know, it's, people are sick right now. Because, I mean, when it's school holidays, it's sort of like her school's at the bottom of the road, which makes it worse. Because she's mm-hmm. like, okay, let's go check. Yeah, yeah like, oh. is it open? The gates are open. But it got to like the third week of lockdown and she just lost it. She was getting up at two, screaming, hurting herself. How are you functioning? I'm, I'm okay. I mean. Because I'm not going to lie. For someone that's going through this, you look good. <laughs> like <laughs> Makeup does a lot. But I, I just wonder what this does for you. Do you have support at home? My mum is amazing. I'm mm-hmm. um, not going to talk about me as that. My mum's amazing. But I think if anything... You have no choice. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And it that's can it. feel like a very lonely yeah. existence at times because no matter who's there, they don't understand. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I love my babies. You're protective of your children. So my close ones could be like, this is going on with me again today. Mm-hmm. But I won't speak too much into yeah. it because mm-hmm. it's kind of like you're speaking you know, down on their name. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You know who to talk to. You know what to say. You know when, you know what word to say to what person and they just get it. Mm-hmm. Like they just get it. And because of your child's disability and special yeah. needs, it's not like with Jayla, for example, I could say, right, you're going to go to your dad's mm. or I don't really have friends who can after my children, but mm. there isn't that option because there's a certain way to look after me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, she's my precious. So, And she is nonverbal. So do you have to know how to sign if you yeah, take care of Yeah, I mean, her? but she's quite... You only have to get to meet Mia a few times and she'll tell you everything she needs about signing. <laughs> she needs there's no flies on Mia. She wants something, she's got it. Um. My mum, I trust with her. Some cousins, maybe. But in general, it's us. And I wouldn't even put, no disrespect to me, but I wouldn't want to put that pressure. On someone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yes. depending on her mood. Who, who do you have as your support network? Oh, I've got I've got an incredible family. Mm-hmm. And their dad is, like, you know, he's amazing. He's an amazing father. So the problem, actually, funny enough, in that situation, probably does lie with me. Um, Why do you say that? Because I don't. Uh, again, no disrespect to Ronan, but I don't want the thick. Right, okay. So in the mornings, depending on what fruit I have in the fridge, Ronan might decide that the blueberries belong in his Ugg boots today. Um, or at 3 a.m., he might decide, you know what, mom, I'm just going to tap you inside the head of this chicken for you to fry. And like, it's not, he's not being a bad boy. He has no concept mm-hmm. of time um, or the fact that blueberries in your Uggs are not the one Mm -hmm. um uh and he will go in someone else's home and do that and it's not Mm -hmm. to say that they would then get mad at him or at Mm -hmm. me i just don't like the idea of right i love my son but i don't like the idea of putting somebody else to work can i ask you is there an element of not there problem is there an element of shame Never. Hell no, 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 way. no, it's nothing to do with shame. Never. It's to do with the fact that, right, so even if my son was, I don't like the word normal, I will say like most children, um, it, it wouldn't bother me to hand him over, uh, you know, and it's not to say, um, like my family haven't had him. I have an auntie who's amazing, she will call me and just randomly say, I'm off work for a week. I'm not doing anything this weekend. That's her way of saying I want my children. Yeah. Because she knows what I'm like, yeah. I'm not gonna go, yeah, 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 take them. She's letting me know that that period of time is it's there so for you. Space yeah, if you want to just get her. And he yeah. loves her. He will just he's well, her house is one of the few places he will just like walk in without looking back for me. Yeah. Second home. Right. Yeah. So I have got um that support network. I um I've got amazing people around me. I'm just very Precautious. Yeah. Did you have support? Um, I'm going to say yes, I did have support. Probably not as much. Are you saying that because you don't want to insult the people <laughs> that was around you at the time? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I hear that. Yeah, that's a completely different conversation. But um, yeah, I did have. Why do you feel guilty about that? I don't feel guilty. Um, I just feel like because if they didn't step up and they didn't do enough, say they didn't step up and they didn't do enough. No, it's th- there were situations around things that were probably. Ma- this is not very. <laughs> Okay, all right. I can't even on. make it politically correct. Okay. Let's just not do that. <laughs> all right. But um, I did have support. My mum was a massive support for me, probably like most of our parents, actually. But um, as the my as my uh, twin two got older and more um, boisterous, for want of a better word, and more hyper and more verbal, the it just got less and less and less. So feeling lonely is something that I'm very used to. But at the same time, I actually quite enjoy my company, so therefore... But for Jade, her child likes school. Did yours? Um, I mean, they're boys. They didn't not like school. Um, and to be fair, considering their disability and how... So in primary school, I had to educate my Senko that um, they had ADHD. And more so, like, because Twin 2 was always getting into something. Always, always, always. If there was a something going on... Twin two was in there. Mm. Never really instigated it, but it was always the one that got caught doing it. Oh. Do you know what I mean? Like, always um, excluded for this, that, and the other. I remember one time he got excluded for a week for sell- telling the Senko, no, 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 no. The amount of times I was up and down that school was ridiculous. You're a special needs teacher. You are the one that's supposed to tell me there's something mm. wrong with my child. Mm. So mm. how can you... Anyway... Once twin two got diagnosed, at nine, my we might add, bear in mind I was said to you ladies earlier, mm-hmm. we were at the Michael Wright Centre when he was five. Mm-hmm. Um, fully diagnosed via them slash cams at around nine. Um, and as much as a lot of people didn't like my decision, I decided to medicate them both. Right. My decision to do that was because you are not while you're at school, you need to have that calm mind to intake what you need to Can intake. I just run back? You said that some people wouldn't like it. What's the... The opinion of some of the people around me at that time was there is nothing wrong with Twin Two. Um, he just needs a slap and to be punished <laughs> and to be put in the corner. Um, but yet, when Twin Two was medicated... Everybody could see a massive difference. He was so calm and he and he's not an idiot. He's very intelligent. Very, very intelligent. My whole argument at the time was, you're not teaching him quick enough. That's the problem. Um, and if you're not interested, and a lot like with me and my ADHD, the same as theirs, if I'm not interested in something, you could, it's like that. And do you find that with your boy? Yeah, Vernon definitely has um, an attention um, mm. deficit, if that's the word. And is yeah. he medicated? No, I don't medicate him. So what happened when he gets to 16? Are you worried? Do you have a lot of worry about Yeah, that? I worry about that all the time. But mm. at the moment, I'm a kind of, when I get to that bridge kind of person. Yeah. Because mm. I can't be That's the only that. way forward, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, I can't you be letting Every day's different. I can't, I can't I, imagine I, that. Every day is yeah. the same but different when you have yeah. a disability child. You know what you're probably going to get. If you don't get the worst case scenario, it's a wicked day. So like at the moment, this whole, there's a lot about filling your cup. And self love. That's important. That's <laughs> important. <laughs> How do you self love in this game? Because I'm not hearing space for yourself, Jade. How do you self love? When the children go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have my own little things. My own little like form. Of, I love singing. So kids go to bed. I start writing. Sometimes it's just my little therapy with my own time mm. to myself. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the only time. Mm. And and. All of you have other children mm-hmm. other than the child that has the disability. So you experience what you experience with the two, but you still went on to have more. What? Um, um, <laughs> and, and you? Me, I was, a, you know what? It seems like upon hearing about everything, it just seems so hectic and so. No, 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 no. Remember, this is my first step into motherhood mm-hmm. is having me. I mm-hmm. know no different from me. In fact, it was harder. When I had Jayla, I didn't know what I was doing mm-hmm. with a child with no disabilities. Really? Especially. I knew how many, Mia came home on oxygen. I knew how many cc's of oxygen she needed. I knew how to do her bloods. I knew, I felt like a nurse by the time I came home with her. Yeah. And she was one of the most placid, happiest children. For, for a child that's been through so much, you would hardly ever see her cry. She mm-hmm. looked like a little dumpling. Yeah. She stayed tiny forever. And now she's like my height. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. But she was so easy. 
The second one comes with that, and I can't swear, but comes with the problems. <laughs> and they ain't got the problems. It's mad. Yeah. That Jayla's is the one that gives me more work. But I never mm-hmm. wanted Mia to be an only child. Mm-hmm. I wanted her to have a brother or sister. And I'm so glad because the way Jayla is, I mean, Jayla learned sign language when she was two. Mm-hmm. Jayla taught Mia how to use the toilet by herself. Mm-hmm. Mia and Jayla have the tightest bonds. And I always say to Jayla, God forbid something happened to me. And maybe That's other true. people look at it in a bad way. But it's not a burden, but, you know, you're your sister's keeper. Yeah. Mia, if she could, would do the exact same with Jayla. She's very protective over Jayla, but... I think I made a good decision having the second. I, Definitely, it, yeah, for sure. Definitely. And I, as as bad, it doesn't sound bad, but it's not that you mourn for the child you thought you would have. When Mia got diagnosed with cerebral, I never knew anything about it. Mm. Then I realised she's never going to walk. When I found out she was profoundly deaf, I knew she was deaf from when she was when she came home. They only diagnosed her profoundly deaf when she was five. Mm. I got an apology on behalf of the NHS and a letter from the Queen to apologise. So I've been saying it for years. And they were saying, you're not, you know, wearing her, she's not wearing her hair. And I said, she can't hear with them. You know, I leave the room, she's crying and she looks at me. If I come back in the room and her back's to me, I can call her name, she's not turning. But if I stamp, she feels that vibration, she's looking at me. Mm-hmm. If mm. she'd have had cochlear earplugs like she has now, if she'd have had them at the age of two, she would have speech like you are. Oh. So I realised that So my what's child... the apology going to do? I'm not mm. being funny. The Queen could keep her letter for me. Because <laughs> what is that doing mm. for the hearing? Like... I mean, now she can hear. Yeah, but she hasn't got speech. They said she never speaks. She says mum. She says yes. She says like. She says Lala, her sister's name. But She will speak because you're mm-hmm. slowly every day teaching her how she, to speak. She's defied all odds anyway. Yeah. But you do. You mourn for the child you thought you would have. Like, ideally, when you was pregnant, mm-hmm. I knew I, she was never going to call me mum initially. I knew she'd never hold my hand. I knew she'd never walk with me. So then when I did have my second, it was like, okay, I get a chance with that as well. Mm. Does that sound bad? I don't think... No, I think I it's just think brutal, honestly. Bad. And you've got one after yours as well? No, no, Raina came first. Raina came first. Yeah. And so it was almost the opposite for you. You had expectations that your first pregnancy would replicate itself and it would be all good. I mean, truth be told, Raina didn't speak clearly until she was four. She spoke like, look, 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 no, no, Tina Shade. She spoke like a minion, you know, them little yellow things mm-hmm. in Spickable Me. Mm-hmm. It was very... Baba like, my mummy can have some tea or something, some, uh, some such. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but um, you know, I, then I put her into a fantastic school. Um, I put her into a fantastic school, and she started speaking very rapidly once she was socialising with more and more kids. I yeah. mean, she went to nursery and everything, but she was just very quiet in that nursery. That's why I say the school is fantastic. Mm. The environment was everything. Um, the class was small. She was in a class of like nine girls. Mm. And so she could have that one-to-one time with the teacher. Right. And um, when she was coming home, you know, I was paying attention to the school syllabus, everything like that. So reading every night, things like that. And it just came into being. Mm-hmm. So like I said, even with Ronin, I could tell it was more than than him just being young when he started, stop, you know, the there was regression in his speech and the physical stimming. But um, yeah, Raina was first. So I just thought he'll catch up like she did. Would you have more? Oh, hell yeah. You would. Yeah. But, but, oh but, my but, God. but, 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 <laughs> but, 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 in, 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 my, in my mind, I wish. Yeah. But I can't envision doing that right now. There's too much going on right now. I couldn't. Yeah. But do you possibly... worry about the, the disability as a decision-making factor for you to have more children? I don't think it's just me. I think... It, it, uh, you, you, Jayla has to share the time that, I, you know, you, you would... The younger sibling, I think it's harder for them, actually, to have an older sibling that's got dis- disabilities or special needs because they have to share that one one-on-one time, that attention that they should be getting really. Yeah. So it's on both of them. And it's not just me as disability. It's, I don't think it'd be fair on either one of them. Mm. I think I'm in a position right now, especially, yes, with Mia's situation, we don't know where we'll be next year. There's all different things that That's happen true. with her. And Jayla needs that support too. So to bring a newborn in, it'd just be horrendous. I and think. so thinking about, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you about, no. No, I'm asking you about relationships. We're going to go there. Okay. Oh. Can we talk about how your children and their disability has impacted the progression or regression of relationships you've been in? I've pretty much been single since me and the kids' dad broke up. 
because of their disability because of their disability but what? not yeah but it's not been it's almost like a self-made decision mm-hmm. because it's like bearing in mind so I had two going through the same thing all the time every day and then like I said the the the, the shrinks the doctors the hospital like the the amount the intrusiveness that these people put into you and and maybe mm. your children are like this because you mm. and their dad have broken up and now they're like, yeah, no that's... like my kids don't actually even really know me and their dad to be together mm. like I've then sort of over the years found out little pieces of information where you know ADHD <clears throat> or the child's brain comes basically <coughs> from the mother's brain <clears throat> whether that's true or not I don't know but the fact that my twins are non-identical. And yet they both have ADHD and so do I. It's come from somewhere, right? Bearing in mind, I'm the common denominator in that. I don't feel guilty for that. I don't hold myself in any judgment for that. When I got diagnosed myself when they did, I had a massive midlife crisis to a point because I thought that all the decisions I'd made, wrong or right in previous and younger years, were now what I call ADHD decisions but you but, still went on to have your daughter, right? Knowing that knowing, you've got two boys. <clears throat> but my daughter, when I did, I had, I was had her, and then the boys got diagnosed. Ah. you see. So, do you I, think you would have had her I, if you knew? Honestly, I couldn't even say hand on heart. I didn't want kids at all when I was growing up. So oh. to have <laughs> twins, you haven't one at least. Yeah, do you know. Um, so. Yeah, so I didn't want any, and then to have three, like I said, I would never, ever change. My daughter brought me so much love and light, and so many days she was the real reason I was waking up because of how beautiful just she is as a person. But to think that I now have to share myself with a fourth person who then has to take on some of the shit that I have to deal with, mm-hmm. that's not fair on that person. I mean, you know, I've had relationships and they've lasted maybe a year or two, but it's also to have someone who doesn't know my whole situation to then come in and try and dictate how I punish them, how I talk to them. You don't know about ADHD, let alone you don't know about my child and their ADHD. Yeah, that's it. And that's, that's the it, difference. The individual. That's the difference. Mm. So ADHD comes under autism. Yes. But if I was a shrink, I wouldn't have said that. But yet there are so many common, uh, con- you know the word, denominators. <laughs> denominators in that. But it's if you really break it down, they are completely separate. Mm. You have shrinks that tell you, don't label a child, don't, don't do this, right. don't do that. You need the but label then, to help them. But you need the label, because so, without the label, we can't move forward with exactly. anything. You can't get a statement to put them in a sh- You can't get EHCP, you, you can't, can't get, get financial it. support, you can't get a, you can't a get school bus. Do you date, Jade? Do you date? I had just started last year, but I mean, I finished with my daughter's father two years ago. Okay. Mm. And I was with him for 10 years. So wow. nice. the last time I dated before that, I was 18. So yeah, it's so a whole new world. It's hard to date. Very now, scary. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's very scary. Things aren't like how they used to be. <laughs> Is it just scary because of the men that's out there or scary because you've got a job with a disability or everything? Oh, it's going to my child because they're completely separate. I mean... Right. Mia's dad is uh, I Jayla's dad is different to, is a different father. Um, but J- Jayla's father didn't meet Mia until we've been seeing each other for like nine months, and yeah. that was by chance. Mm. I kept them separate. She's my precious until I know you're something like permanent. There's no need for you to meet her. Exactly. Yeah. He would stay over sometimes. She'd wake up. It could be two in the morning. You have to go. <laughs> He's like, but she's she's. You know, but I know, but you have to go in case she wants to come in my bed. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah that's my baby. Yeah. So yeah. I, there's no concern I have with the children. I, I mean, if anything, it was just sparking up that confidence again mm. to kind of get out there yeah and I, it, as i said it was just felt really alien it still does so i've just held myself back now because mm, mm, mm. i don't think i was ready so <laughs> i'm going to try again no, yeah. i remain optimistic yes but um so how what would it look like so you meet a guy first date yeah do you tell him about your children 100%. and their needs first date? Yeah. Before I'm Jade and mum. So I'm going to tell you exactly my situation. Like My girls are everything. I'm so proud of them. Mm. But I don't say it so it's like, um, now you know this. Yeah, it's not just a statement. Like, no, no, no. It's this is a, me. It's yeah. just like, this I met you. I am. Sam, you tell me this is where you work. This is where you live. Mm. I'm Jade. These are my bubbas. This is my situation. Mm. Then this is what I do for a job. This is, do you know what mm, I mean? Yeah. It's yeah. just... Yeah. 
it's got nothing to do with me as disability. But as I say, I keep that situation completely separate to my brother. And how would Mia be if you brought a guy home? She'd probably love the guy. Mia, she loves everybody. Oh, no. My Jayla, on the other hand. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, who are you? But my children have never seen another man in the house other than their father. I mean, like, stay over or something like that. Yeah. But... Yeah, and that's something just... I feel that to be so proud of. Like even like I said, I've been single for I don't know how many years, but it, with that alone, like there are l- not even a handful of guys that come in my house and my boys don't know who they are mm. because they have been forever friends or they're like j- they've just been around forever. I, I think, think that's so just important. something to be so proud of. Like, it is so important as a mother, you know. Definitely, at the end of the day, it's not. That's that's my whole. Point. There's there's you being a single woman. Mm. And then there's you being a mother. Exactly. I never that. want my children to look back and think, oh, yeah, I remember, I, like, mum used to have this one come and that one. Mm-hmm. And woke up to yeah, Gary in no his uncles. boxes in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, there, there were no, yeah, no, we're not doing no Gary in his boxes. There were no you know, uncles. And I was thinking about judgment. Do you guys face, and I would say, I start with you, Jay, because your, your child's disability is more obvious. Do you see public discrimination? Oh. I, you know, most definitely. Initially with Mia, it was very hard to tell that she had a disability because... You could only tell when you see her move. So she stayed in a normal buggy, like a stroller, up until she was six years old. She was so small. Mm. When she went into a wheelchair, on the other hand, um, it would be then you could tell because she's in a wheelchair that people thought she could maybe speak. Um, and she will make sounds like ads. Or, but then they could tell. And, you know, it would be a lot of staring. Mm. And that used to bother me hell a lot. Because if you mm. ask me, oh, my gosh, I've got no problem in mm. explaining. But you stare at my child like there's a problem mm. that we've got a problem. Because <laughs> I just find myself having staring matches with people. <laughs> Are we okay? Mm. You know, so some people will ask. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I think, and sometimes she gets, she's very, very, very intelligent. Mm. She is so smart. It's just she does things a different way to you. Yeah. And she's written off a lot of the time. So, oh, she wouldn't understand that, would she? Or she wouldn't, yeah. I mean, she's a whiz with a touchscreen computer. Mm. You give her a touchscreen. Mia can't write Nickelodeon, but she can type that in one time. She can type YouTube. She can type, <laughs> she's a whiz. Yeah. But you wouldn't know it unless you try to. Yeah, you learn about her. Go down different avenues to get there. And yeah, I, I think she's just written off a lot by people because they think, oh, she, yeah, and she and probably do, wouldn't be able to do that? that or understand that, you know. Do you find that? She... Oh yeah, for sure. Get a lot. Get it a lot because of because Ronan's is visible when he is having a. If he gets overstimulated, um, let's say we're walking to school. Let's say there's like a lot of buses. There's honking horns. There's kids laughing on the way to school. He might get overloaded mm-hmm. um, sensory wise. And he might just decide, I've got to stand still and cover my ears, mummy. Mm-hmm. He might start punching himself in the face. He, he, it's very visible that, um, yeah, he's not a regular child. And then I've had people just be rude with it. I don't <laughs> mind, like Jay was saying, I don't mind if it's, um, you know, oh, is he okay? I mind when it's what's his problem. I've had oh. that before mm-hmm. um, on the buses. Oh, I've had, hell. yeah, I'm on the carriage. I'm on the train waiting for the train to take off with him. He might start crying because I didn't split his Kinder Egg perfectly in half. Mm-hmm. Oh. And then he, he'll he he'll have a complete meltdown. And I've had a woman get up and look at me in disgust and walk off, get off the carriage. Yeah. I've had a complete it's, it's stranger of, leave yeah, me almost in control tears. control your child. Yeah, it's a mess. Look. It's a yeah. mess and I'm thinking, get yeah. over your damn self. Like, mm. bigger world out there. There's Quick people. Judge. You understand? So, as far as I'm concerned, I don't could help, though. I mean, for example, is it, for example, when you're pregnant, you have a badge. Would it help if your child walked around with a badge to say they're, because it, it might not be obvious? I mean... You see, like, we're all just like, mm, it might, but... Mm, um, yeah, yeah. Might, yeah. You don't have, you don't have to explain uh, Yeah, I don't... Yeah, exactly. That's exactly. where I'm at now. It yeah. took me some time yeah. to get there yeah. because if you knew me before Roe, I was... I mean, I still am to a very high degree. I'm a very... I don't like confrontation. Mm. I am very sort of... I like, to, you know, <laughs> I don't like that kind of nonsense, especially when it's not necessary. Mm-hmm. This is not your child. I'm not asking you to yeah. pay my bills. You're not with me at night trying to comfort him or... Mm. Or play games with him at 3 a.m. because he's no longer tired. You're not here for that. So for the five seconds that you're in his proximity and he is maybe making a bit too much noise for you, 
just be kind about it. Yeah. Because even if he wasn't autistic, he's a child. child. Were you just some sedated little whatever in a, your mum's corner? What, what? So just relax yourself, mm. you know, and you can be polite with whatever you have to say. Because what's happened recently with us is I've now lost my home because the neighbours decided to lose their damn minds mm. during the lockdown. Because part of his stimming is jumping and skipping around. We lived in a maisonette, so mm. we were above them. It's an old house. I did a lot to try and appease them, including put down the thickest carpet I could afford. Their father helped me, you know. It was crazy, so I wrote notes to let them know. They knew his condition anyway, because we've been we had been neighbours for years. So yeah, there's a lot of public judgment. There's no sanctity in the home. Do you mind me asking, this is the council? It was Housing Association. It's crazy. It he is crazy. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. But they, so, like, I've been on the waiting list to move. I'm in a two bedroom with four of us. We've made to move. I moved in when my boys were three months old. They're 19. We're okay. still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got, and this is Housing Association. So. During lockdown, when Mia had her, she had a meltdown, I did. I got a noise complaint there. But mm. I mean, I rang them straight away and I was saying, you know, she can't. Yeah, what's can we Like, do? I yeah. can't control that. Mm. They show away. It's just like Housing Association have told me my boys' needs aren't severe enough, which is why they don't need their own. Work. And that's a, that's a, my query. Yeah. Is it about the severity yeah. of the disability? So because my boys look normal, whatever yeah. normal is, they they just look like average kids walking up and down the road. But they have they have but they have they have a they have a uh, yeah yeah an SES. yeah yeah. yeah. But they're 19. They're not at college now. They've finished all of that. But on the other side, so even when you were saying about the overwhelming and stuff like that, the walking to school, which is literally like three minutes from my house, if a car was spinning or an ambulance, and to the, to this day, now in all fact, with me, mm. my friends will tell you, it's too loud. I will stop because yeah. it's too loud. And that's me as an adult. Mm-hmm. So as a kid, yeah. remembering what that feels like, the, the piercing impact yeah, that yeah. it goes on in your brain. It's like nails yeah. on a, it's It's so almost bad. traumatic for him. Exactly and so. Six, he can't protect himself with his words. Yeah, no, exactly so, so. That's why I have a problem when people have a problem and it's got nothing, to, it's not right. affecting you. Just keep walking. Like, so no, no badge. Yeah. <laughs> no badge. No badge. You know what? This no is, I have, wearing big old cold weather, I still have sunglasses on my head because the light is still sensitive for me and mm. the way that everything affects me and my my brain cells yeah. like it's a lot it can be a lot but you do what you do to get through every day yeah. and you adapt I said my boys uh, are not medicated now from the day I found out that food impacted their yeah. behavioural I literally went I was Mary Poppins I was like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mary Berry whatever her name is but I how do you, find that, no, but how do you cope financially because it's very different to putting on some nuggets and chips to mm. having to make adaptions in your home mm. to being able to give the stimulation that's specific to your child's needs, mm-hmm. that to give the food that, that's specific to their dietary needs to help them. How do you cope financially with all this? Because you don't have a choice half the time. Mm. You make do. I, for me personally, I remember there was weeks that I I would have just like beans on toast for myself because I needed to get the, the fresh food, which, I mean, I grew up in a white household. We were used to oven shit do you know mm. what I mean but that's not, I knew that's not how I have ever cooked myself mm. but to now know that I can I need to go and buy all the fresh fruits and vegetables to make what would be just a fling in the oven 20 minutes yeah. it obviously it adds up and it does it cost does. but you would for me you would just have their leftovers or beans on toast because that's nutritional even though it doesn't look like it is you just deal with it. And then when you finally get a diagnosis, you are then finally able to tell Bob, who can then tick that box and send you the money. That but don't you find you've got to prove you. your finances all the time when you're in? Mm. Mm. You've got to I prove have everything. Two to three jobs. Like I've, I've hustled, I've done whatever I needed to do. Mm. Go you. Like, yeah. 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 HMRC no, round here. <laughs> like I struggle with the one job with the one child, right? So you've got but if you had to, you, do you, it, innit? you would just do it. Yeah. Me and he is like private physio. I don't, I've, ne- I've stopped leaving anything to the NHS. Mm-hmm. I left, they said she'd be a vegetable. They said she would never cross, she'd never feed herself. Mm. It started with the hands. And I knew with this hand, she loved her food. Mm. You might think it's evil, but I held the other one. Mm-mm. So I put her food in front of her. And she'd eventually, she'd, her tongue would come out. She was concentrating. The hand started opening. She started thinking, wow. crawling. I watched Ray Charles. 
and forever in a day. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That film, my God, my heart, it, but it was like a light bulb came on in my head and I thought, nah, I've got to like kind of be tough with yes, her. Yes, you do. Yeah. And I'll never forget because she had no net control. I mean, we raised money. She was £50,000. We got her to America. Wow, she had an SDR amazing. operation. It changed her whole life. She, you she, raised your own money? I don't know. We did. She was an Evening Standard. She was on the, she was on the BBC News. We, my mum, my mum, forever in a day, she's the one that found the operation and she sort of like cheerleaded the fundraising side of things. I was pregnant with Jayla at the time. But um, it changed me as life. 90% of her life has improved through that because, you know, she can, she can sit up. She couldn't sit in a chair like this before. She just thought she had no net control. She was on her tiptoes. You know, she had all these plastic cords. She was really tight. But um, I, li- I listened to them and I said, you know, she'll be a vegetable. And I could just see none of that. You said she wouldn't be able to feed herself. Because you know your child. So I used to, you know, as you do when you want to get them, call him. I'd roll up a blanket and I'd pair on it and I'd line up her toys and I'd sit one into the room. And she would sit there and her head would be bobbing and she'd be crying. And my mum would come in and she'd be like, just pick her up, Jade. But I used to get back and say, go. If you don't like it, go. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When I put me into sleep, I bore my eyes out because mm-hmm. I hope I'm doing the right thing here. Three weeks in, Mia started commando crawling. Yes. Now Mia's here, Mia walks in a walker. Wow. Mia, the child they said would be a vegetable, would never feed herself, would never do anything. Mia writes, she uses a computer. She she can do near enough anything herself other than get up and run. I don't do so anything past that. Yeah, you're but right. I you had to go boss, for private like... physio. They, they were sending a physio once every two weeks for half an hour. No. No one child with cerebral palsy is the same. Um, so you're going to have all different forms of it. With Mia's kind, Mia's, she has bilateral, so it affects both sides, but mainly her right. Um, that's the weaker side. Physio is everything. Mm. And with any child with cerebral palsy, they reach a certain peak in their teenage years. And then whatever physical protection they've had stops. So I do. I feel like I'm, I've got like a stopwatch there. We're on a timer at the moment. So I have to put all, my all into getting her where she needs to be. Mm. Yes. And that's led me down like some roads. As I say, I was a dinner lady at one point. And I, dinner ladies, rate them to a T, by the way. <laughs> but when I was younger, I think never would that be me. Yeah, I was a dinner lady. I worked as a call advisor. <laughs> junior clerk had my main job. I had a night job. Mm-hmm. I mean, sleep deprivation can make you go mad. I was seeing things and all sorts. Like I was yeah. sleeping for two hours. God. But 1,800 every three weeks. And Mia was getting where she needed to get. 1,800 for private physiotherapy. Mm, she went to a place called Charlotte's Web. Jeez. I've heard of that place. It's amazing. 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 Why is that yeah, not yeah, on the NHS? Well, why is there not funding it? No, no, no. I, I, because you get a diagnosis. And the way the NHS have it, if I'd have listened to them, Mia would have been a vegetable. Mm-hmm. Because there's only so much they're going to do for you. Mm. Right now, Mia's not got a walker at school. I bought her walker. She did have a walker at school. She was meant to have one at home. Then funding got cut with the NHS. She hasn't got a physio really coming into her school. They've cut down all our equipment. If if you don't have the means to, to, to provide these extra things for your child, this is like the heartbreaking thing because your child could be so much more mm-hmm. than what they're diagnosed mm-hmm. to be. But you're not given any no, options. And NHS, we're lucky to have them. Yeah. Yeah. But... They do the bare minimal. Yeah. And, you know, it's just basically this is Cam's, what the child's going to be in accepting. Cam's wanted me to put mine into a special needs school. And uh, I the Cam's to. waiting list is like six months Listen, to a year anyway. Even. But yeah, go on. I, <laughs> so, but it was a special needs school where um, he, they'd be sent away. And they would be doing horse riding, rock climbing. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, that's actually, I'm like, can I go too? So yeah. maybe that sounded amazing. But um, like you said, the waiting list was X amount. Mm-hmm. So they wouldn't have gone into a mainstream. Or it'd be part-time mainstream until we can get you into this right. lovely school. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. But my boys aren't... I've never treated mine like they've been special needs, mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. They, I've le- taught them how to cross the road safely and wipe their ass. I can teach you how to do anything else that you need mm-hmm. to do. So they put them into mainstream. Yeah, we have problems. Mm-hmm. But you get over that because you have no choice but to talk to and to fundraise and to do whatever, whatever. Um, and even get expelled from school as a parent. Because you have forced yourself so much on that same door that's refusing to listen. That has to so what? I can be expelled as a parent. That's okay. Can you I'm, expel a parent? I'm well, well they, she did it, yes. and oh, well, she did it. But it's that's okay because I've got friends who are who are got my back that are knocking that same door and fighting my fight for me. I've got a special needs teacher in that school who is wanting to leave the school but doesn't want to leave my son, oh. so he stays on until he stays on. Sorry, until my son finished school. No, but that's so important. No, but like, do you seriously, know? you don't get it. Mm-hmm. And then became a police officer who now, if I feel like, wow, 
Scared. He's doing this, like, what can I do? Da, da, da. Can you come round? To this day, we'll still come and knock and just yeah. be like, Rav, what are you doing? Because if I'm the one that has to come and rescue, you know how that much that's going to break my heart. The respect levels that Twin 2 and this special needs teacher has, nearly 10 years after the fact, is ridiculous. Oh, you get some the angels love, in the right places. Mm-hmm. The love I have for this guy is unreal. But it's like we said, angels and the support you have, just because it's not everywhere you turn, you only need that one person, and that one person can just make every single thing then either fall into place or just seem like it's okay. And can you just imagine that there are so many women that don't have that one person? Yeah. There are thousands. Yeah. Like, yeah, there are so many. There are so many stories. They don't heard. have the mums, even. I mean, mm-hmm. your your stories are very fortunate that you have families. Yeah. yeah. And I worry I have for myself that I don't have the family. No, I have girlfriends who don't have support. I have girlfriends who actually have two and three special needs children. Um, and we used to we used to always say to each other, like, God, just wouldn't it be a place where, and I don't know how this is going to sit with everybody, where you can just cope the living shite out of your child and no one judges you because there are so many days where I love my sons and my daughter to the extreme obviously any parent does but there are so many days I don't like you Mm. you are you're so in there and I've got no space to have my self-love I didn't know about self-love for a number of years because Mm. I just needed to focus on eating sleeping and getting up at whatever o'clock to make sure that child needed blah 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 when I did sleep, I had twin one, had night tremors, and this was going on for years. Mm. And then, I won't bring my daughter into it, but she's got issues as well now, and it can be a lot. But, as I've said, you only get dealt the cards you can handle as far as I'm concerned, mm. and you will never get dealt cards that you can't handle at all. So, for me, my kids are a blessing, and... God knew I'd be able to handle it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that's, and, that's, and that's a theme that I'm hearing from just, all of you. I am not hearing what I thought I would hear. The woe is me. Mm-hmm. Not, oh, certainly not. Not mm-hmm. one of you have said that. Mm-hmm. But with children like us, that humbles you. Mm-hmm. To have children like you have to be humbled by your child. This mm-hmm. child goes through the most. That's mm-hmm. why they go through the most. Do you see what I mean? How then yeah. could you look at yourself and think, I feel sorry for me? Yeah. I, look, I look at mine and I say, like I said, they're 19 now. And they didn't get that great of grades leaving school, but the people they their personalities overshine everything else that what that a grade can't give you. One of them is a shelf at the Hilton. One of them is a recording artist, and I am a fantastic mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because I recognised, and you recognised your child's yeah. needs, and you fought and fought and fought for them, and that is the most, like, you can't get any other praise than that, because now all of a sudden, these people with PhDs and, and whatevers have now had to admit that you were right and they were wrong. Yeah. Like, for a long time, I used to say things like, I've got an ADHD, not a PhD, mm. like, I don't know what I'm doing. Mm. Every single day, I'd, like I said, our days are the same but different, but I've never had a 19-year-old boy. Never had a 19-year-old twin set of boys. So every day is the same thing. Never had a 16-year-old girl. Every day is the same thing. It's the same, same, but different. Every day they're going to give me the same battle, but in a different way. And it just depends on how I decide to handle that mm-hmm. day or I decide to handle that battle as to where it's going to go, either left or it's literally just going to go right. And yeah, I think for me, it's yeah, like, it. like, it. the only way forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I came in this conversation thinking that you guys must have a master plan. <laughs> that you have a schedule that you know what's going on but I think winging it for me is what you do and you do it so well every day I can't I can I I have so much adoration for you ladies um I will go home and hug on my daughter because mm. I just feel like we all just need to love and you guys are loving in the most challenging and difficult circumstances and I have nothing but respect for you and those that have watched this and are going through the same thing or or worries because you guys are awesome like you are mm. ah I'm not even mm. a crier of the podcast <laughs> but you are awesome and I'm so fortunate for you to be here today oh, oh don't yeah. <laughs> yeah. thank you it. thank you for doing thank you thank you for doing this thank you I know this is a conversation that's really difficult for you guys and it's it's 
it's meant everything for you to share this on my platform. You need to stop. I know. Yeah, so don't, do that. Thank you. <laughs> don't do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's been. I love you, ladies. You are my family now. Oh, you're yeah. in my family. It's official. Thank you. I said to you. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> ah.